What do we have here? This is a voltaic cell. It's named after Alessandro Volta, who started inventing these things around 1800. They're also called galvanic cells because of, uh, uh, what was his name? Luigi Galvani. He's uh, one who's credited with discovering electricity. They're all Italians, aren't they? Chem guy's half Italian. <laughs> so, um, what we've got here is this voltaic cell made of zinc and copper with a copper 2 nitrate solution in the beaker and inside this porous cup is zinc nitrate. Uh, sometimes you'll see voltaic cells set up, and I'll give you this in the diagram in a second, with two uh, solutions separated but connected with something called a salt bridge or a U-tube. So when the zinc goes into the zinc nitrate, the copper and the in the copper nitrate, and you've got a connection between the two made by the porous cup allowing movement of ions through the cup, you get registered on the meter a positive voltage, which means that there is a current flowing from the anode, the zinc, to the copper, which is the cathode. Now, which is which and how do you tell and what ions are flowing? Oh, that's coming right now. So if we can take two half reactions, one where an electron is being lost, or electrons are being lost and then gained, and we can then intercept the flow between the reducing agent who's losing electrons and the oxidizing agent who's gaining them, that electron flow or electricity we can utilize for power to be able to, to, to use cameras uh, to film chem guy or, uh, with batteries in them or, or, or uh, calculators. Battery power, portable electricity, portable power, absolutely vital. It was discovered about 130 years ago. Well, let's take this reaction here, written in what we call cell notation, and let's draw what the voltaic cell would look like. A voltaic cell is an electrochemical cell that will produce an electrical current. So this vol voltaic cell, or galvanic cell, right? Uh, this one is going to be made from dichromate ions and hydrogen ions, acidified dichromate, and the carbon here is very interesting, and it needs to be there, and I'll show you why as we do the diagram. And this reaction, which is actually the SOA, because it's gaining electrons, is going to react with a piece of tin in a tin 2, let's say tin 2 nitrate solution. This solution might be potassium dichromate. This acid could be H2SO4 or HCl, something like that. So, We've got this half reaction for this right here. And we can either build that half reaction or we can just look on a, on, a, on a data chart, on a reduction potentials chart, because it's probably there. It's a very popular reaction. And so is the tin one. And remember, the highest one on the left reacts with the lowest one on the right. And through this list of chemicals here, that's what we've written here. Now, this is going to be the half reaction that gains electrons. Now, gaining electrons is reduction, that means it's an oxidizing agent, but here's what it means in terms of drawing the cell, or building the cell. This, because it's reduction, will be the reaction, re reaction that occurs at the cathode, or in the half cell, half cell, half reaction, the half cell that has the cathode in it. And this is the half reaction that's going to occur at the anode. So anodes for oxidation, the two vowels go together, cathodes for reduction, and the two consonants go together. Okay, now, when we put this together, we're going to get a total voltage of 1.37 volts on a voltmeter under standard conditions, and that's, uh, that's uh, you have to actually take into account the fact that there's resistance in the wiring and in the apparatus you're using where you might not get the proper voltage registered. So, remembering that all of this here describes what's happening in anode and cathode. Let's put this together now in a diagram form.